Hey and welcome back. I hope you guys had a great holiday. Oh, it was so relaxing and wonderful. And now we are surrounded by new stuff, right? You probably got a lot of new stuff and there's post-holiday mess. So we're thinking about decluttering. So I thought I would really share with you I'm probably gonna get emotional. This is just a disclaimer because I wanted to share with you how I work with clients when it comes to decluttering, when they're really struggling. And maybe you'll be able to relate to this. And if not, I hope you find it really interesting to see the process of someone going from so much anxiety they can't get rid of even one piece of paper to freedom from their stuff. Today we're going to work with Karen. Karen is all the way across the globe in Australia, so there's definitely a big time difference and I can't be there to help her. But she reached out to me and we're doing some online coaching to help her overcome extreme fear when it comes to decluttering. She has a beautiful daughter who's currently co-sleeping, but she wants to give her her own room. She had a beautiful bedroom, but it's just got used as storage things just got added to it um, when I got overwhelmed just with the daily life of looking after her when she was little I'm standing at the door and she's got a wardrobe which of course is just stacked to the top with stuff so I can't even get into it the first thing I noticed looking at this space is of course how full it is but how big some of the pieces are that were just tossed on top and how obviously she's not using anything that's on the bottom because there's absolutely no way to access it so i know that a lot of this not only can go but has to go there is no amount of organization no amount of shelving in the world that's going to be able to find space for all of this stuff it 100 percent has to leave her home and she cannot make a decision or let anything go without a lot of fear. I was wondering if you were a ladybug because what I am seeing is this is a room where you're hiding things. It's like you're shoving and you're hiding, which is really typical of a ladybug because you don't want to see it in your main living spaces like your lounge. So it's going in here, but it's filling up filling up, filling up. So is your garage, I know you had the flood, but is your garage usable now? It is, but I've also filled it up. <laughs> Ella gets given a lot from my family. And I've tried to tell them right from the beginning, you know, we have a small place, please don't buy big things. But they see them and they love them, they can't help themselves. And that's frustrating to me because I'm like, well, I see those things too. And I'm her mother and I can't buy them because I don't have the space. And now I've suddenly got to make space in the house for your stuff. Um, and, you know, if I even say anything, they get so upset. The more I talked to Karen, the more we really got to her why. And her biggest struggle was financial instability. So she saw everything as money. The money, not only that it cost to buy it, but the money that it would cost to replace it in the future. And she had so much fear about not being able to replace things. So even though her daughter never played with the ball pit, she saw that as $50 if she would have to buy a ball pit again. Here's the truth. She's never going to have to buy a ball pit again. Her daughter had one. She's old enough that she doesn't play with it. We know she never will. We have to separate the money spent, the money something costs, and what that item is actually giving to us right now. And the only thing this stuff is doing is taking from Karen. And I just kept having to say this over and over again and tell her, this isn't going to cost you money. This is going to give you space. This is going to give you freedom. And so we chose three things that she could try to sell online. The basketball and soccer chair, the sewing things, and the ball pit, which she had already told me that she didn't want and wasn't using, but was crippled by fear about letting it go. I can get to her drawers. You've done some things in here. I have. So this is all I kept out of the fabric. So I'm really proud of myself because it um, took the volume of a dishwasher space the drawers yeah we got floor space <laughs> oh, there's a real path here this is excellent okay so so excellent let's be honest decluttering and organizing doesn't seem like it should be hard it's hard because 
we don't trust ourselves and we don't have the confidence that we can do this. And as soon as we don't believe in ourselves, we can't do it at all. Our brain will not even let us try. And this is what was happening with Karen and so many others, and maybe you can relate. And so it's my job to tell you that you can do this. You already know the answer. You already know if you should keep something or if you shouldn't, or if something, how it should be organized. You just don't trust yourself to just make the decision, just do it. And the great thing is it's scary, okay? It's scary to trust yourself, but I want you to do it anyways. I, this is the mantra I told for Karen, but it should be your mantra too. I'm scared but I'm doing it anyways. Because every time we push ourselves out of this comfort zone, it gets easier. And every time we give in to that fear, it gets harder to do it the next time. So we push through, we push through, we push through until it's not hard anymore. So Karen's homework was just to trust herself and do little bits at a time, one pile, one tiny bin, not to try to tackle the entire space because as soon as you're overwhelmed, you shut down. So we do it in small little bits and that's how she's going to build up her confidence and that's how you're going to build up your confidence too. So let's see how she did with our next meeting. First of all, this looks 10,000 times different than I first saw. You couldn't even walk in here. So yeah. be really proud of yourself. Look at the floor. I'm going to start with these drawer organizers here. We talked about creating another drawer organizer for your craft supplies, but what are you planning for these two? I think they're red. Yeah. Um, I don't really have any sort of idea. I think I used to have like stationery in them. And, um, I don't know. I, I don't love them. I don't yeah. think they're really functional, especially for macro organizers. They're just random junk catchers. Yeah. And I think you should just let them go. So the toy on top that's still in a box, do you want to keep that? No, I don't think so. It was a birthday present that's a year past. <laughs> so she's out I mean, not for Ella, that was for someone else. Oh, okay. You were gone. Gone. <laughs> Well, you can try to sell that. that that's sort of something like try to sell it. Again, seven days if it hasn't sold, we donate. But I love that. Let's take a picture. I'm going to add that to your homework. Every meeting I had with Karen, which was a lot, she got a little bit more confident. But we were chipping away at this. This was small steps every time. There was no big dramatic, here's your homework and whoa, look at all you did. It wasn't like that at all because it wasn't even about the stuff for Karen. It was the transformation up here. And it takes a long time to love yourself, to have, oh, uh, this is really heartbreaking for me because uh, I knew that her clutter was making her hate herself. And it was this vicious cycle of she hated herself. She didn't trust herself. She didn't love herself enough so she couldn't make the decision to let it go. But it was the stuff making her feel all these negative thoughts about herself. But then because she had these negative thoughts about herself, she couldn't make decisions to let it go. And she was stuck on this vicious cycle. And from an outsider, it feels like I, I wish I could just say, just let it all go. Just put it in a dumpster. Move on. You can f start fresh. But that's not the way it works. We can't wave a magic wand and make somebody have self-confidence. We can't <laughs> wave a magic wand and, and, and have them stop feeling insecure and scared about finances and making a mistake, but it can happen. I feel like you've seen me cry more this year than ever for some reason. What is wrong? Okay, I'll tell you why I'm emotional. I cried every single time I got off a call with Karen. I bawled because Oh, her stuff was ruining her life. It was ruining her life. And I've been there and I know how hard it is, but I know how great it is on the other side. And I said to Joe, can we fly to Australia? Because I cannot leave her. But Joe said no, because he's practical. It was also a pandemic. But um, 
yeah, I, I just had so much empathy, so much empathy for her situation. And even though we were making progress, it was so slow. And inside I'm like, just get a dumpster. But it, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. And I was just praying that we could do this virtually. I knew that if I was in person with her, I could help her faster and I, and I, could, I could make a bigger difference. And I was so scared that I would fail because we were doing it virtually. And um, just excuse my face, we're gonna get through this. <laughs> so I didn't talk with Karen for a few months. Uh, we were making progress and then I felt resistance from her. Life got busy and I didn't know if I'd ever hear from her again. And she contacted me and she wanted to have another call and I wasn't sure what to expect. Was it gonna be worse? Was it gonna be the same? Um, yeah, I was really nervous and um, let's check out that call now. This is exciting. So how did the decluttering go? You were really struggling last time we talked, but you started getting into the flow of things. Yeah, um, well, it looks really good now. You wanna have a look? <laughs> At the door, there's nothing there on the wall now in the cupboard. A little toy chest. They're organized toys with their categories and she seems to be able to keep them in the right spots. So that's really exciting. Books, dolls, her bed and her chest, her drawers. Oh. And that's it. Oh, and the couch, of course, that I'm sitting on. <laughs> I am flabbergasted. What? <laughs> This is amazing. It's beautiful. Wow. So is she sleeping in here? She is. So she's gone from, as you would have seen, she's lost the side off the cot as well. So that's been huge. Um, but just having her own room has been absolutely amazing and beyond my dreams of how nice I thought it would turn out. So it's been incredible. When I first met you, you couldn't even walk in here. <laughs> like, do it was you a storage room. <laughs> it was a storage room and it was so overflowing and so big and so overwhelming. And everywhere you looked, there was memories and there were special things. And you, I, I'm going to be honest. I was like, this is going to be hard. <laughs> and you did it. It was hard at times, but yeah, <laughs> it, um, it just amazes me every time I walk in here. I am so proud of Karen. This was an incredible transformation. I wasn't sure what I was going into. To say I cried is an understatement. So proud of her. This room before, if you remember, was filled to the ceiling with stuff. Definitely not a bedroom. And now it's a beautiful bedroom for her daughter, a place to play and read and sleep. And look at Karen's face, her smile, her confidence. This didn't just give her daughter a room, she gave herself a new outlook on life, a new boost of confidence. And she knows she can do anything now. The amazing thing is almost every single thing was donated. We started out with so much fear. She wanted to sell absolutely everything, but she realized during this journey that her time is worth more. And she let it go piece by piece. It got easier and easier until she didn't need me or anyone else. She actually told me she decluttered the rest of her house too. And she's living a new, simpler, happier life. Ah, I'm emotional again. What? I just... I want this for you. I want the same transformation for you. And maybe you don't have a space that's filled to the ceiling like it, Karen, but decluttering and organizing, no matter the space, can do the same thing to your self-confidence. So, new year, you guys, new you. Let's grab a bag, let's fill it up, and let's start creating the home that we deserve. If you want to transform your house just like Karen did, now is your chance. The Take Your House Back course is back open and I've teamed up with Dawn from The Minimal Mom and Dana from A Slob Comes Clean and we are your clutter 
coaches. We are helping you have less, do less, and want less through our online course and our Facebook support group. And coming up very soon in January, on January 15th, we are doing an all day live declutter where we are your live clutter coaches, helping you finally kick it to the curb and get the house that you deserve. It's time to take your house back. Check out the link below for all of the things that this course offers. Do not miss out. Thank you guys so much for those of you who have stayed to the end. So Karen's story reminds me of something that Joe says all the time. He says there's two types of people in the world. The people that leap out of bed and they're just like, let's go, I'm crazy. And the ones who are slow to get started and not just out of bed, but like in every aspect of life. Karen is a really good example of a slow starter. It's like a little push. She's a rock, I'm pushing, but once she starts rolling, the momentum is amazing. I, on the other hand, I'm a burster. I'm like, boo, I do things, ah, and then I'm knocked out and I'm exhausted and I have to take a, like a, a week's sleep, you know, to, to re-energize myself. And I just find this so fascinating. I'm curious what you are. If you're like a slow starter like Joe, or you're like a, good morning, let's run a marathon, except we know I don't run, but you know what I'm saying. If you are a burster like me, Joe thinks it's better to be slow. He says, he says he's like a grizzly bear and I'm like a jackrabbit. So I'm running around the forest, I'm much faster and I'm like, ah! but a grizzly bear, even though it's slow to get started, he thinks is better than the jackrabbit. I'm like pretty sure grizzly bears live off of bugs because they're too slow to catch the rabbit. But let me know in the comments below. No, it's not a competition of who's better, but it is different. And I think it's interesting to know which type of person you are. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.